part three of uh, Lando Brown accusing Will Smith and Michael Jackson and Nick Cannon of having sex with him and raping him and his children. And how this business is, um, this business is not for the, the thin skinned, weak at heart people. And it's the truth, you know. A lot of actors fall by the wayside. A lot of singers fall by the wayside. And um, if you don't manage your money, you too will fall by the wayside. And you don't want to be having someone read about you 50 years from now or 10 years from now where you were up here at one time and then you... Well, here's the thing about entertainment. That's going to happen regardless. So what you want is a permanent working job on that. And you want to be able to manage your money so that you can become a producer so that you can um, still get paid and make more money. The business of producing is a whole lot easier than the business of acting because, you know, acting, you know, once your look doesn't um, fit your age and stuff and, uh, excuse me, it's harder to get work, it's harder to get cast, it's harder to get your foot in the door, but if you are producing the show, you can... Twist that around any way you want, like like Larry David for Curb Your Enthusiasm. He's not only in the show, but he also is an executive producer, so he's cutting the check. You know, and the thing about that is that, you know, if you're part of the entertainment part where you're cutting the check, you get to be the guy who picks the cast and director, who gets to pick the actors that are going to be in your shit. And Larry David, if you're out there, I need a job. And I love Curb Your Enthusiasm because it's not scripted and it's all actors being themselves and going with whatever you throw down the gauntlet. I can do that. That's the kind of acting I know I can do. Because that's the acting that I was trained to do by Miss, um... Damn it. Miss Stapleton and Mr. Ruff. And I greatly appreciate them when I really started trying to get into acting and then the fact that the studio here in Virginia has just let every actor in Virginia down. No, because we make historical movies, we don't do kung fu movies, and now we don't make movies, we just release them. So, you know, that's kind of some bullshit, but, I mean, it is what it is. But Orlando Bloom has accused one of the most high-paid actors, being Will Smith, of rape. And he also said that Nick Cannon dressed in drag and gave him head. You know. So, I mean, when you hear stuff like that, yeah. You think to yourself, okay, what's going on here? How did we get here? You went from being a good star in That's a Raven to being a raving lunatic. And people have said that he's been involved with drugs and all kinds of other stuff. And now he's got a knife on a TV and he's threatening to stab Will Smith or cut his throat. And then he's telling people in Walmart that Nick Cannon gave him head and... All kinds of other stuff. I mean, this shit's all over the place. It's nothing new. That's it's new to me, because let let's let's take you guys back to Amanda Bynes and other celebrities that have um gone somewhat ballistic. Now, mind you, Amanda Bynes didn't go ballistic when she left. Um, hey Amanda, and whatever show that was, I think it was Nickelodeon. You didn't hear nothing else bad from her at all. Okay, so she either she 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 managed her money. You know, she, she she was a smart person. You know, she wasn't one of those people who, I need 13 cars, or I need this super big mansion. No, she kept that shit simple. And when she left the limelight, life, you know, she managed her money to make it so that she, and made very good investments so that she could live her life and not have to worry about going back into acting. That's what smart actors and entertainers do. The other people who get way too much money and they come from nothing and have more money than they can spend literally go out and blow every fucking dime they have with the conscious thinking that I'm going to be working again on another project. You don't know that. That is the one constant in this business. You don't know if you're ever going to work again. Period. You may make one movie and you might that movie might set you over the threshold. And then your next acting thing can determine your future. If your next movie flops, people might not want you anymore. You know, let's see. The Rock has made some flops. Vin Diesel has made some flops. But 
because they have such great fans. Anything that they make, flop or not, they spring back. Um, I like Jason Moore. He made Conan. Everybody called it a flop. But I liked the remake of Conan. It dove more deep into Conan's parents. It didn't go as far back as Call when Kevin Sorbo did Call. But, you know, still, it got people in the seats. Everybody loved the Jason Momoa Conan. And the people who didn't were probably people who just didn't know the range of Jason Momoa. They liked Jason Momoa more in Game of Thrones versus Call. I mean, excuse me, Conan. And the thing with that is, this young man, Mr. Brown, Orlando Brown, either he can't get work, and after all these things, he probably won't ever get work again, and he didn't manage his money. Amanda Bynes managed her money, and she is successful at whatever the hell it is she's doing. The Olsen twins, they managed their money, and they were successful. They became producers. They produced things, and you probably would never even know that they produced shit. You know, save your money. When you become an actor, when you work and get really good checks, if Disney gave me a job tomorrow and say, hey, look, you're the Scarlet Spider. Your job as as the actor of the Scarlet Spider is to go from this city, this city, and this city, and you're promoting the Scarlet Spider. You're not going to be the actor that's going to be in the movie, but you're going to be the actor that's going to walk around in this outfit promoting the movie. Guess what? Check. I'll take that. I'll, I'll do that. You can hook me up tomorrow, Disney. I'll be ready to go. I have my own outfit. I just need new gauntlets and new shoes. Or you can make me a custom-made Scarlet Spider outfit, because that would be awesome. And maybe make it out of leather instead of spandex. Anyway, you know, the, the thing with being in this business, you know, for those who are successful and stay successful, is that they invest their money. They don't waste their money buying shit that they don't need. You... Let me let me let me put it to you this way. For me, I would buy three houses. I wouldn't buy anything else. But I would buy three houses. And I'm gonna tell you why I would buy three houses. Okay? You can find this to be ridiculous if you want, but I'm gonna find I'm gonna buy three houses. I will buy one in California, because I'm probably gonna be working there the most. I'll buy one either in Virginia so that I will have a place to retire if I chose to come back home. And I would either buy one in Florida or Hawaii. It's more than likely that I wouldn't buy one in Virginia. Because I want to escape Virginia. Unless I marry someone who really wanted to go back and live in Virginia. But other than that, if I was successful tomorrow, the first house I'm buying is one in Hawaii. I want a compound in Hawaii because that's going to be my sanctuary. And that's going to be my base of operations. And it's only five hours from Hawaii to California. Second, the only reason Canada is not on the menu unless I'm working in Toronto and we can find a government loophole that an American can have um, property there without having to marry a Canadian or whatever, or if I have to become a dual citizen so that I can have property there, that would be the only way that I would possibly buy a house in Canada. Except for I don't like cold weather. So that's a bit of a problem. But you know, if I could buy a house in Vancouver where a lot of shows are filmed, then hell yeah, I'd buy a house there. But for my personal purpose, Hawaii, California, in either Florida or Virginia. Because that way I know that we're, if I'm going to be working in those areas, I'll have a home to go to. You know what I mean? And if, if not, then if I'm mostly working in California, I want a house of my own. If I'm, if I'm living in California and I'm working in California, I want a house. Straight up and down. I don't want an apartment. I want a house. If I'm living in California and I'm making enough money, then I want to buy land in Hawaii and build a fucking house. And that'll be my main base of operations, you know, because I'm going to get a jet and fly back to California. But as, as a veteran, I can also use a military discount on getting my airplane tickets. So that does help me there. But, you know, let's say tomorrow. Like tomorrow, Disney calls me. It's Saturday. It's the... What the hell is today's date? Is the 18th, 2020. Say tomorrow, Disney has seen this video and Disney goes, Mr. Williams, we have a rule for you on our streaming service. How fast can you get to the airport? We have a ticket at your local airport 
waiting for you to fly to either California or Florida or Vancouver. Do you have a passport? Yes, I do. How fast can you get here for your interview for this show? You are going to be playing someone who is full-blooded Native American. We took a good look at your profile, and we've decided that you're not going to play a black person, but you are going to play an Amer American Eagle or something, an agent of S.H.I.E.L.D., even though that show's ending this year. But you're going to be an agent of S.H.I.E.L.D., and you're going to be guest starring on maybe Falcon and the Winter so Soldier, and we'll see about probably giving you a role in a different thing. Guess what? I was like, I can get to the airport right now. I'm going to beg somebody to take me to the airport. I'm going to have my passport. And how many? How much clothes do I need for the day? Am I only going to be there for one day? Am I going to be there for a week? Tell me what I need to bring. Passport, deodorant, toothpaste, toothbrush, clean underwear, and maybe two or three pair of pants. My ass is there. Understand that. Understand that. I'm not taking no for an answer. I'm going, I'm going to be on my best behavior and I'm going to do what they want me to do with one exception. This doesn't get touched. You can dye it, but you don't cut it. That is not going to happen. I'm growing this shit until I die. Anyway, you know, this guy, I don't know why he has not reached out to Disney for help. I'm sure he has some friends in there because they rebooted that so Raven. They rebooted it. It's called Raven's Home now, or Raven's House. Why has he not done what I would have done? Before I would have went off on all this other stuff because of all these reboots, I would have went to Disney, like, long ago. When they started talking to Raven while she was on The View about that, I would have been right there at Disney's office and said, Hey, look, dude, if y'all gonna bring back that's a Raven, can I get on this ship? No. If y'all gonna bring back anything, can I get on this ship? You know... Disney gave me the job. I'm going to get on here and be on my best behavior. No cussing. I'm not going to be doing Instagram or any of that other crap other than, you know, taking cool pictures beside Raven and doing what I need to do so that I can keep my job. But, you know, this guy just, okay, well, I'm going to stab Will Smith in the face. I'm going to cut his throat every time I see him on TV. I want to cut his throat because he's raping me, raping my family. Him and Michael Jackson are the same person. And as I read that, I'm thinking to myself, Wow. I'm not judging the guy. You know, honestly, because that could be me. That could be anybody. But the problem is that in this business, in this business of making movies and TV, and with the exception of theater, you know, in this business, you have to have your P's and Q's. And you need to invest your money wisely. When certain people leave certain shows, like Nickelodeon shows and stuff like that, and you don't hear anything else from them, and then you don't remember their names or their faces. And then all of a sudden they pop up on a different network for a different show. Because I remember all that. And some of them are back on the new all that. You know. And they're like executive producers and shit like that. There's something seriously in my ear. Oh, I'm sorry. Anyway, the the whole... Yes, I wiped the wax on my pants leg. You can't see it, but it's there. Anyway, the whole the whole thing is that, you know, when you are in this business... One, you need to be in it to win it, but you need to win it here. You know, you need to be able to know that when you are getting out of this business, you need to have money to live, and you need to make decisions and investments that help you survive versus, why do you need 13 cars? Why are you buying people shit that don't give a damn about you for anything other than the money you made by being on a show? You know, you have to plan things out, you know, if you get married to someone in this business, you need to understand how this thing works. You know, you can't get into this business without some clear-cut, mind-opening, eye-opening, soul-feeling thing on how this works. And the most important thing, I don't give a damn what your job is. You have to manage your money. You have to. You have to manage your money because you don't know if you're going to work again. Now, I do know how like certain shows, if they're on for a long time... You get royalty checks, all right? Because if you were a Power Ranger, you're getting royalty checks. You might not want to admit that out loud, but you're getting royalty checks. You're going to get royalty checks for the rest of your life. And when you do the cons, you get paid to go to the cons. So, you know, you're getting royalty checks. You're not working that hard anymore. Now, which goes back to what I said at the beginning of the very first episode of this thing is that 
when I make it. I'm not going to be charging fans fucking 60 bucks to take a damn um, selfie with me. I'm not going to have a bunch of my pictures laid out and be like, 60 bucks, 60 bucks, 60 bucks. I was like, you know, these people just paid anywhere between 160 bucks just to get in here. Because, you know, it's like 80 bucks for the first day. And if you're going to stay all three days, that 80 bucks covers Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And just think if you're going to be at the con for a whole week, like if you're in a, in California, where they have the big cons, where those cons are like five and six days a week or whatever. And like if they start on a Monday and you're there from Monday through Sunday, you've paid over 150 bucks just to get in. Because, you know, you're there for five days. If three days is 80 bucks, just imagine how much five days is. And you've got all these people who want to come see their fans and they want to come see these superheroes and all this other stuff. And you want to charge them 60 bucks for a photo op. Fuck that. Because without those fans, you wouldn't be getting a photo op. You'd be just like those fans. And that's like my golden rule. Now this Orlando cat. Yo, dude, I feel for you. I understand how this business works. I don't know if you're doing this because of your like not being relevant and you don't have a guest on Raven's home, which I'm going to say this. I have nothing against Raven Simone, but seeing this guy go through this as his friend, if I was her, I'd be like, let me go talk to these executive producers real quick. It's like, look, we got to get this guy off this problem. We got to do, we got to at least have him on one or two shows just so that he can like have some way of saving his life, you know, because he's, he's on drugs. And part of his contract can simply be, look, you want to be on Raven's Home? We got you. You're going to be on Raven's Home. But you're going to check into a rehab. You're going to be like the same thing they did with Courtney, um, Courtney Love when she made the movie Hustler with um, Woody Harrison playing um, the guy who ran Hustler magazine. You're going to be getting a drug test every day. As soon as you're on the set, you're getting a drug test. You fail the drug test, you're off the show. Simple as that. And whatever we filmed, it'll be on the show, but you won't be coming back. And, you know, give him some motivation to do the job. No. It's like, look, dude, I'm um, going to end this video. But before I do, um, this goes back to one of my films that's up. It's laptop to laptop, so it sucks. But I want you guys to go look at it anyway. It's called Guardians of the Earth. I had a golden rule when I filmed because I know people who like to s fucking smoke greenery or drink. And my golden rule was simple. Monday through Thursday, you do whatever the hell you want. We film Saturdays and Sundays. Friday night, if you drink, that's fine. But go to bed early enough so that you can get up and be ready to go with everyone else. If you smoke, that's fine. But go to bed early enough so that you can be up at 0900 hours because we film at 930, 10 o'clock. And most of the time, we'd have a meeting first and we probably wouldn't film until like 1030, 11 o'clock until like 1 or 2 or until people couldn't go because they had other things they had to do. In independent films, you know, you're doing a lot of scheduling around people's real lives and jobs. So that's kind of a hard part with independent films, but you know, it can get done. And we filmed Guardians of the Earth for like two months. Or maybe three at best. And then I started putting it together. And the guys that I had pulled in were awesome. Courtney was awesome. Tay was awesome. Rodney was awesome. Jay Diz was awesome. CLS was awesome. Uh, Dijon was awesome. Hell, I was fucking awesome. Two guys that were supposed to be there... They die in episode one because all they wanted to do was smoke weed. And it kills me because they were friends, but it kills me because I told them, look, dude, I gave you the rules. Everybody else follows the rules. Why can't you? Just because we're friends don't mean you don't have to follow the rules. You know, if you're going to drink, fine. You need to be up Saturday. Even if you show up drunk, show up. If you're going to smoke and be high, show up. You're like right down the street from me. You're, just, you're like 70 paces. There's no reason why you can't show up before the people who have to drive all the way across town and out of the county to come so that we can film this thing. And we're all putting our all into this. All we ask for you to do is show up and do the same. And they just wouldn't show up. 
and they lived in the neighborhood. So, Charles, he wouldn't show up. Dust, he wouldn't show up. And everybody's getting pissed off because we need them for some critical scenes, but you can't fight the, them if they're not there. So, you know, sadly, they got voted off. I was the only one that voted to keep them because I was willing to give them more than one shot. And it didn't, it didn't pan out the way it was supposed to. So I got outvoted nine to one. Did these guys like, yeah, look, dude, we need to, if we got to be here and film, and he's a critical star of the film, the least he can do is show up. Or the night before a call and say, look, dude, I'm not going to make it. Or what you really could have done before we even started filming was, look, dude, I don't want to be in the film. Because I would much rather have a no than, you know, all right, I'm going to be there, I'm going to be there, and then everybody's waiting for you. You're taking up all of our time that we could be filming cool shots and then you're not there. Now, again, so I can end this video by going back to Orlando. But before I go back, um, I had this happen in Dragon's Breath with a girl. So he knows I'm very sensitive about, you know, that last minute quitting crap. That's not fair to the other actors and it's not fair to yourself or me or anyone. So you don't do that. Now for Orlando, you know, dude... I didn't watch That's So Raven. I won't lie to you. I know that's where you're from. I've seen your face plenty of times because, you know, still still on. That's So Raven is still on. It's not new, and Raven's home is new. But you really got to get your shit together, and you need to go get some help. And then maybe you can probably go talk to Raven because I think she's one of the executive producers as well because she has a little bit more creative control than she did when it was just That's So Raven. Um... You can go talk to her about, yo, dude, I, I really would like to be back in the business of working. You know, talk to your people. You already got your foot in the door. But you're not helping yourself with these crock pot videos about getting hit from Nick Cannon and threatening Will Smith and them and him and Michael are not the same. But in case you didn't see, they both had two different skin tones and two different noses. So, you know, you want to work? I get it. Because I want to work too. But you need to get help and get your shit straight so that you can. I just need one opportunity to get my foot in the door and I haven't gotten it. But you already had it. And instead of taking advantage and using your brain and making smart investments, you screwed up. We all screw up. But how you pick yourself up and keep going is what's going to make you or break you. And you're only 32. So you have time for a, a major comeback. Turn your life around, pray to God, and get your shit straight. That's my personal message to you, Mr. Orlando Brown, because you are already an accomplished actor. Well, I am accomplished nothing. I am an accomplished failure. I am very successful at failing. Very successful, because I've been trying to break into this business for 19 years, and I have failed. Here you are, a successful actor, and you are continuously throwing your career in a dumpster where I've never gotten a career. So here's a piece of advice for you. I'm hungry, dog. I'm hungry. If Disney comes up to me tomorrow and says, we got you, you damn right they do. I'm ready to sign today. Just after midnight right now. It's uh, almost 1230. I'm ready to sign right now. If Disney comes to me and says, hey, look, we got a character for you in the MCU. He's not mixed, but he's Native American, and you look more Native American than black, so we're going to sign you for this guy. You're going to do three seasons. Done. Done. Where are we filming at? We're filming in Vancouver. Done. Done. Say, But I have a couple of clauses that we need to discuss before I sign this contract, and you're going to have to amend whatever you want, because my whole thing is, as long as you don't touch my hair, and I don't have to play a gay person because I don't know if I can actually do that. Um, we'll work on the third clause. But, you know, yeah. You know, you already got your foot in the door, dude. What are you doing? Wake up. You have your foot in the door. Now get your shit together. Ask for a job. Get your shit together. Go to rehab. Get your shit together. Apologize to Will Smith and Nick Cannon. And move on. I am not you. I have busted my ass for 19 years. 
No one knows who James Williams Jr. is, except for my 89 followers here on YouTube. But they know who you are. You were a great star, and you fracked up. Simple as that. Now get it together and do what I would do. First, save face. Apologize to everybody. Second, put all that BS behind you. Get your agent back on the phone that got you the job in the first place and let him smooth out some waters for you with Disney and Raven. Get into rehab. Get your shit together. Pray to the good Lord and then do the damn thing. This is Kung Fu Avenue number two. BC and you.